Okay, so I'm here today to work on that. This is another recent acquisition and it was completely covered in weeds all the way up to pretty much the cab. I was here one day, maybe a week ago. So yeah, I kind of hacked my way in here. The other day, all of this was, you know, up at the cab level. This is a Massey Ferguson 50HX backhoe loader. Backhoe, JCB, you know, you name it, there's tons of names for them, but it is a purpose-built backhoe. So this is not an attachment. This is integral into the machine. Same with the front loader. Now, it's clearly been sitting here a while. I see right off the bat, this tire is off the bead. There is a tube in it, so there's a, there's a chance. Um, they've got the outriggers chained up. The bucket is full of gravel, which maybe it's for additional weight. I don't know. Maybe they maybe it died with a load in it. But it's a diesel. It's a Perkins diesel. An A4248, I believe. I'll have to check on the other side and double check that. But it's also four-wheel drive, which is awesome. So as you see there, that's the front hub and the short little drive shaft going back. I don't know what's going on with it. They said they've never had it running, bought it to fix it, didn't have time, couldn't get it running. They wanted it gone. You know, it's not, this is about a 15,000 pound machine, 14 something. Let's see here. Okay, so we've got a Perkins A4248 diesel engine. I believe it's a four-cylinder. Here's the bucket. It's missing the front grill. This isn't the end of the world. That's the hydraulic pump, I believe, the main hydraulic pump. And then, I don't know if there's something missing in that hole. It looks like a bearing hole because uh, it has oil grooves in it. So, and my guess is this is some sort of a hydraulic cooler, maybe? Or an oil cooler because there's just two sections around finned that one and then one, one right behind it and then there's the radiator back behind that so that's the coolant this is probably oil or water I mean I'm sorry this is probably oil or um, hydraulic oil and that is probably also oil or hydraulic oil so engine oil or hydraulic oil I'll have to figure that out But let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four cylinder. Here's our fuel injection pump. There's the starter. So I'm gonna guess that's oil fill. Let's see what we've got for oil. Oh, fancy. Look at that. Let's see here. So the max is there at the top. We are maybe right at max, just below. So that's good, and it looks good too. The oil's nice and, it's not too black really. It's still, it's black, but it's not overly black. So yeah, another diesel, which is awesome, and four wheel drive. Well, that doesn't look good. Uh-oh, we might be out of hydraulic fluid. I'm gonna guess that's, this is our hydraulic oil gauge, and this is probably a return tube, and it's got a huge crack in it, so we might be, might have no hydraulic oil in it at all. This is the hydraulic oil fill right here. <sighs> okay, so somebody's definitely been in that before. And that throttle doesn't look factory, but it does work. What is this? Brake fluid? Fuel? I don't know. Forward, neutral, reverse, steering wheel. And here's our shifter. Looks like we got a four speed. I 
think it went into all four. I think we're in fourth, third, back over, first, second. Yeah. And this is our bucket control for the front. Seems to be free. Probably parking brake. And then I don't know what that one is. This one might be like four wheel drive or two wheel drive. Not sure. Got two pedals down here. They're moving together. They're probably brake. Maybe clutch, I, I'm not sure. I know this is probably throttle, like a foot throttle. Right there. And back here on the backhoe, we have the outriggers here. And then this is the bucket, boom, and the other one. And then there's a button in the middle. I'm wondering. Does this thing have an extendo boom? Some of these Massies had the ability to extend out further than they. No, I don't think so. There would be like a channel here that would slide out. No, this is just a fixed, fixed boom which is okay because on a machine that's been sitting, a lot of times those things get really seized up and can cause more problems. Looks like one of the hydraulic ho up, hoses up there has been replaced. I see a new one down there. Um, this is a new one. This one's new-ish. Hmm. Okay, well, at least three of the tires, this rear tire and then the two fronts are on the bead. Pretty much every single light on this machine is broken or in varying degrees of broken. That's probably an 18 inch, maybe even a 24 inch bucket. So that's a good size. Not excited about that big crack there in that tire. Maybe it'll air up, I don't know. But Really, at this point, we'd be relying on the tube. What's under here? Maybe the, well, that's probably transmission fluid. There's a dipstick. Yeah, we are pretty much right at the L. So, the fact that it's got some in it, that's a good sign. I have to top that off, figure out what it is. And all the wiring is just, you know, these scotch locks, crimp connectors, just boatloads of these. I hate these crimp connectors. You know, crimp fittings. Those are always amperage draws or places for something to short out. So, yeah, this is cool. And then probably something under there. Maybe it might be a hydraulic filter. I can't. Yep, hydraulic filter looks like. Hydraulic filter housing. I would assume. I know this might be a little out of order, but I want to find out if this tire was going to hold air because if I can't get this machine running here, I have to put it on a trailer and drag it back home. So I want to see if this tube will 
take air. If it doesn't, then I know I have to figure that out between now and when I got to get it moved, whether I start it or not. So we're going to put some air to this. I've got my little 12 volt compressor that I'll hook to the battery. I'm going to start the truck so we get a little more juice and we'll give it a shot. <laughs> So I went to put air in this tire. You can see right above my finger, the actual valve stem has tore off of the uh, tube. So there's no way I'm getting air into that tube. So more than likely, I'm gonna have to get a new tube or find another tire. I have to figure out what to do about that. But for now, at least we know I gotta do something about this before I can move it. Let's work on trying to see if we can get the engine to crank. All right, I brought a battery that's okay. It's not great, but it's charged. We're gonna delete on this one. Put that one in, use the jumper pack as well. All right, I got the battery hooked up. We'll turn the key. We got a buzz. Then when I go to turn the key, nothing. And sometimes it quits like that. I'm not sure why. Try and short across the solenoid here. We got nothing. Nothing at all, so either that solenoid is bad, or the starter's got an issue, or both, or something else. So this starter actually says 40 2018, so that might be the 40th week of 2018. It's only got two of the bolts holding it in, these outer two, probably because they didn't want to mess with getting the third one in. So I'm going to pull the starter out, and we're going to go from there. Uh, I want to be able to bar the engine over possibly with the flywheel and I'll get access to that by taking this starter out too. So the starter does not look that old. But that does not mean it's not bad. Never discount something you think is new just because it looks new. Don't discount it as the problem. Don't don't think it won't be a problem because you could get brand new parts that are broken or never worked or are defective. So, all right, now I'm gonna bar this over. I made a mark on the flywheel to see if it will go all the way around. So far, it's free. It's moving. The engine is not stuck. That's a great sign. I'm just hoping it goes all the way around and doesn't stop. It's getting a little tighter. Hopefully that's just compression. Okay, that bar ain't working. Huh? 
Come on, baby. Oh, oh, there it goes. I don't know if it was stuck or if it was just uh, building compression. It's definitely harder now, but it's moving still. Come on, blue mark. So I would have gone on the front of the machine, but I can't get anything onto the crank nut at the moment, so I think we're going to make it around. You really want to go all the way around when you're testing this because you could go all the way and then stop and then go all the way back and stop and you know you got something that's really a problem. Because with these old machines, when you get them like this, you never know what's happened to them. You never know how well they were treated. Usually not well. There it is. There's my blue mark. we go all the way around again that time there was no resistance at all all right I feel like I'm gonna throw the starter back in there and see if it'll turn it now there might have been just barely a little bit of a lock that wouldn't allow the starter to um, basically make that make it turn so and we might have broken that free and kind of gotten something loosened up in there all right, I'm gonna try and put power right to the starter. Yeah, baby. We got crank. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Sounds pretty healthy too. Ha, yeah. All right, for now I just got the jumper pack on the battery leads. We're gonna turn the key and see if uh, we get anything. Okay, same beep we were getting. And nothing when I turn it. So that leads me to believe something electrical from the start switch to the starter is the problem with it being able to start from the key there. So there's a bird's nest of just extremely sketchy wiring under here. With that bird's nest under there, I just I need to really tear into the wiring at some point, but I don't want to do it now. So I need to figure out what I need to have running and have operational to start it and drive it. And then the rest of it, like all this wiring, all this wiring, all the lights and auxiliary stuff can just, you know, either one be simped off completely and added in later or just kind of tied back and pulled out of the way. But I mean, as of right now, we know that the starter works and will turn over the engine and the engine is not locked. I do think that the engine was locked, uh, but I don't think it was bad. It was just a, just a slight lock. So the only other issue I've seen so far is right in there, you see that square plate right there? That is a piece of square flat plate that was maybe birds, bird poop welded to the actual crank pulley. And so I, I believe that the shaft that square plate is connected to is the shaft that goes into the hydraulic pump. And somehow it should be connected to the pulley or to a shaft coming out of the engine 
so that the hydraulic pump can run. I mean, that would be that would be a showstopper for most people when it comes to a machine, you know, trying to, they can't get hydraulics, then they can't run the machine. So more than likely, this pump is gonna have to get pulled. Um, the system is pretty dry of hydraulic fluid right now anyway, so it would make a great time to do it. Now, I still don't know what this is. It looks like there should be a shaft going down through it because the oil, and it goes all the way down through this plate there's a couple bolt holes in here. I don't know if something was there at one time and removed or what, but um, if you have any idea on these old uh, Massey Ferguson industrials, let me know because I'm curious. From what I know, these, these, old, these old things are tanks, so I'm excited to have one. So this is the air cleaner. Um, I didn't even open it up because currently it's deleted, so that's the current air intake and looks like there's a, some sort of a sensor probably a mass airflow of some sort going into the from here to a sensor and then that must be a wire going to the front but yeah I mean all in all this is a great tractor I am really excited to own it really excited to use it Gotta chase down a few things now we know that the engine's free i am really pumped about that i was seriously concerned that you know the engine was going to have an issue so let's see if we get any coolant oh yeah we do it's green that's good well that means that the engine has is at least holding fluid for the cooling system, so that's another good sign. That means the radiator's in good shape. And it didn't look like, I didn't see any oil in there, but I mean, obviously I can't see much. I put this on, I put it on my Gatorade belt, I shoved that on. Obviously it's just going down into here, but I'm probably gonna make another one and shove it onto the exhaust. Ooh, oh boy. Oh, there's a mouse nest in that exhaust. I have to figure that out. That might be how the engine got locked. The mouse went down in there, got on top of one of the cylinders. Definitely could cause an engine to lock up. Mouse pee is very corrosive. And then this is the fuel tank for the diesel. And it is completely dry. That's a great sign. I mean, somebody either drained it or what, but I think the fuel, yeah, I'll go right down here. And then this is the, found this on the ground, uh, this is what I'm, I'm assuming this is the elbow for the air intake, that was in the weeds. That's the other reason that I really cleaned the weeds out here, I wanted to see if there were any other parts like the grills or anything that goes to the cab um, that I might find just laying around. A lot of times somebody's taking a machine apart, they're taking it apart in that spot and usually things get dropped right near where they're they're taken off so if you're buying a used machine scour the area look for anything you think might go with it and take it with you because sometimes it's hard to find pieces and parts for these old machines not to mention the cost if you can find the piece that you may or may not need later or you need you know can even a side shield for an engine whatever doesn't matter that's one more piece you don't have to find buy or remake. All right, so there is quite a bit of uh, varnish in the bottom of the tank. It's pretty clean, but before I use it, I want to flush it out. So I've got the boat tank rigged up into the fuel intake. And we're gonna fill some diesel in here. I don't know about you, but I hate gas cans that don't have vents. So I either add them or buy good ones. Probably a couple gallons. Now we'll work on getting it primed. I did take the fuel tank off, or the fuel filter I mean, and drained it. It looked okay, it needs to be replaced, but I don't have one today, so 
we're gonna do with what we've got. So I have a primer ball here. And then there's a primer here on this. So I'm getting bubbles right there out of the top of this. Guessing the seal on that is not any good or it's not tight. I push down, I get more bubbles. Pull up. Kind of solves itself. This is a Lucas Cav injection pump. It made in the UK. You guys over in the pond made this injection pump. I know a lot of these um, Massey Ferguson's were sold over in the UK. And a lot of them don't have outriggers like this. They have outriggers that go straight down and then the whole backhoe essentially can move side to side. Side shift backhoe. Um, kind of interesting. I've never seen one of those over here in the US. Looks like we evicted the uh, mouse nest there, but as you saw, we got it to fire, but it is not pulling fuel through. Um, we got the glass bowl here is as full as I can get it, so it, the filter is full. This is a little primer right down here. You pump that, and it pumps fluid down into the filter up and out to the injector pump now biggest problem I'm having right now is that air leak on the injector pump so it's leaking air and it's leaking diesel out and on to the filter now I, my guess is it just needs a quick rebuild probably some filters and gaskets so Problem. I mean, I'm definitely gonna have to pull that, but I'm gonna try it one more time. I don't want to give it too much ether, but I do want to see if it can run. I mean, obviously it fired, so you know we know that that's good. Um, way better than what I expected. I, I really didn't think this one. I thought this one was gonna be a lost cause, but when I walked, when I was, what I was originally told, and based on what I originally saw, I thought this machine was not gonna ever run again. Now. I'm on the total other side of it. This is absolutely gonna be a runner. It needs some TLC. The wiring is a, is a nightmare. Um, for now, I may bypass all of that and just run something right to the starter so I can just run the diesel. The next hurdle is gonna be the rear tire and whether or not this pump is hooked up and pumping, which I do not think it is, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. There. Starting to get out of the dirt a little bit. I'm gonna grab a shovel.
Well, it sure did take me a minute, but I got it jacked up with two bottle jacks. A little bit of time, a little bit of time, and I got the whole wheel out of the ground. I did have to dig down a good pile. Um, but that'll be fine. At least I have access to the entire tire. And now, probably what I'm going to do is remove it. Uh, take it off and then figure out what to do. Replace the tire, put a new tube in it, or patch that tube. Um, but it also lifted the entire front end of the tractor up. Which is fine. Not really a big deal, but... And the bucket kind of came up a bit. That's the power of a couple bottle jacks. You can do a lot with them. A lot of people underestimate the simple tools when they work on heavy machinery, but with some wood blocks, there's a steel plate under there, a couple of bottle jacks, and a shovel. I picked up this 15 some thousand pound machine, at least, you know, it wasn't all that weight at one spot, but I picked it up all by myself, safely, blocked it up, chalked it up, and now have access to working on the wheel where otherwise some people would be like, oh, you need a machine to do it, or you need a something else, a crane or whatever, but no, you don't. Simple tools. I'm done for tonight. We'll be back on the mf -er here shortly. A little bit windy today, but I'm back to see if I can get that tire changed over. I did buy a new inner tube here, and so we're gonna see if I can get it on without having to remove the tire from the bead. Well, it's already off the bead, but remove it from the, the rim, so, or take it off. Guess we'll find out. the trick is going to be getting the new one in there clean up this bead too here's our new inner tube This is just soapy water. I mainly use it to check for leaks, but it might help it slide in a little better. Like so. It's in. Now I just gotta get this valve stem in the right spot. All right, I can't quite get the tube twisted and I don't wanna tear it, so I'm gonna remove the rim real quick.
Got the truck running. Should be filling with air now. As you can see, the bead is all the way out. The tire is all the way out on the bead. It's filling up. There it goes. There we go. It's on and aired up and ready to roll. Tires in poor shape, but doesn't really matter right now. All that matters is to roll onto a trailer. So the hydraulic line, I'm guessing this is the return line. It goes from here into this filter here assembly. The tube was cut and you can see in there, there's a chunk of the pipe that should be attached to this. There's even a hole drilled in it. So my guess is the only reason I can think of somebody doing this is to steal the hydraulic fluid. They probably needed hydraulic fluid and they thought, oh, this old piece of junk will never run again. Started with a hole, wasn't coming fast enough, so they cut right through it and then had a bucket down here to get catch the fluid. Because, I mean, even the metal banding in the tube is cut. That piece of pipe right there should be about that much further. And the hole in this on the bottom, those shouldn't exist. So, long story is I'm gonna get a new tube and just go from here to here. I'll probably clean up some of these burrs that they left so they don't get in the system, wipe it out really good, and then, you know, hose clamp it back on. All right, this is the hydraulic hose that was cut. I happen to have a bunch of these flex hoses and I know they're not hydraulic lines, they're probably more coolant lines, but I'm gonna see if I can make one fit for now. Um, I might be able to get a shorty in there. The longer ones may or may not fit. So we're going to see if we can get a short one in there and get a handful of hose clamps on it. Get a little oil to lube it up. Where are we going to get it from? Right there. Plug that back up. Come on, baby. Ah, got it. That will work for now. Hose clamp, I'm probably gonna do two hose clamps here, two hose clamps here. Would have been great if I'd put them all on at the same time, but what are you gonna do? I'll have to take them apart, be okay. And then, I don't know, you tell me, is this the right kind of hose for this? Would it be okay? This is most likely the return side of the hyd hydraulic system. There are other areas where, there are other areas where there's hydraulic hose like from here to here and I don't know if that's a patch or should be a hard line the whole way but it's got hose clamps on it and this had hose clamps on it so not sure if that was factory or not but it's gonna be what we're gonna have for now so that we're not losing all our hydraulic oil now all that oil right there I'm gonna scoop the dirt up and we're gonna get rid of it that way um, I just you know this is one of those things that just started happening and i didn't have a pan right here with me so all right so right here is the fuel injection pump and i was going to take it off 
but it's leaking right here in the throttle shaft and this is the shutoff shaft. I'm gonna take this cap off and we're gonna see if uh, I can rebuild, quote unquote, replace the O-rings on those. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. This cap here is just, uh, there's a gasket along the bottom and then there's O-rings on this shaft and this shaft. So you have to remember which hole the spring was in here. And then as you can see on this shaft, there are two O-rings. So I'm gonna replace those two O-rings. And then on the other shaft, which is right here, unscrew this little cap there. And it should push down. And then this is the shutoff shaft. So we're gonna replace these two o-rings. There are three grooves but only the top and the bottom one have have a, an actual o-ring in them. So, Alright, I replaced the o-rings on on the shutoff shaft and you see how they kind of slightly bulge out past uh, they slightly bulge out past the shaft. And here's the throttle shaft. You see how they're flat and definitely not sealing as well. The this shaft was exactly like this. The, these O-rings were completely flat on the sides, and so over time they just break down. So I found that a metric 009 was the best fit out of the metric and standard O-rings that I have in the two kits. So I just kind of take a little exacto at an angle and just pick it right off. Something about like that. Take this wire brush, clean all the gunk. All right, we're gonna give that a shot. These two now, I'll clean them a little bit more, get all the, the dirt and debris off them so they're not in the injector pump.
All right, so I shut it down for a minute. I can't get it restarted. I'm 90% positive it's a fuel issue. I'm gonna do this at home. But I'm gonna take the tank out and we're gonna flush it out and see if we can figure out if maybe that's the issue. If it's not getting, I don't know if the return's not working or something, but yeah. I'm gonna yank the tank. Well, I'm off to a bad start. I broke this dang little fuel shut off twisty do. So I'm gonna have to replace that. Yeah, see, it's just a plastic, basically set screw that goes in and shuts off fuel in there. I'll probably have to replace this whole thing. But right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain out anything left in it and put some fresh stuff in slosh it around, dump it out, and then see if we can just hook up fuel directly to the tank. So this is what we're dealing with. It was definitely probably red diesel, but it has gone stale, varnished up a bit. So I'm gonna put some clean yellow diesel in it, shake it around. The inside of the tank looks really good. It definitely doesn't look pitted. A lot of the junk you see in this pan was already in it. So, you know, there isn't a ton of sediment in that tank, which is great. So we're gonna clean it out, put it back on. All right, so on this engine, there's a little bit of a lift pump action here. So you've got this uh, mechanism where you pump this and it puts pressure to the fuel lines, fill in the filter, fill in the bowl, fill in the lines all the way back to the injectors. So that's one way to prime the system, get fuel all the way up to the injectors before you try and start it. So I'm gonna do that until I get, basically, until I feel like I'm not doing anything more and then we'll go try and start it. The oil is about halfway up the stick, so I'm going to add some oil to it. And because this machine is not running right now, and I don't have the arm up by the way, getting to the oil fill is a little difficult. One trick I've learned is you find an empty bottle. I buy bigger jugs of oil, usually five gallons, but and then you take and Pour some into an empty bottle. And then you can use that to get into a tighter space where this won't fit. And I like it when there's a cap because then that way I don't have to worry about taking the, you know, spilling this. Take our bottle here. Do about two thirds of it, and then we'll check the dipstick. Well, this old girl's just sitting here idling away. Man, it didn't even smoke. That is awesome! Wow! And it's not wanting to throttle up much. Huh. That throttle linkage came loose. Alright. I can fix that. I think I might have figured out why we're not getting fuel. So, this right here is the All 
All right, so right here, this lever here is the throttle linkage, and right here is the shutoff linkage. So, so it should be all the way, all the way forward, like that, will allow us to run. What's happening is this cable here is really only mounted with the zip tie, and the zip tie is sliding, allowing this to move even though up here it's not moving so what I need to do is probably just zip tie the heck out of this to keep it forward for now I think this is the issue because if this is any more this way it shuts off fuel to the injectors up top and doesn't allow fuel so I think if I push this all the way forward and I just fixture this a little better to this tube for now, I should be able to run it. Um, and if it fixes it, great. We'll have to do a more permanent fix later, but somebody definitely retrofitted this throttle cable in here to attempt to get it to run. All right, it's all back together. Let's see if we can get fired up. I'm not even gonna give it any ether. Drum roll. So I don't think I've got hydraulics at all. The hydraulic pump is on the front of the machine and it should have a shaft that should come out of it and spline onto another shaft that comes off the crank. And so currently they're not attached. So that's gonna be a very soon fix. I don't know for sure, I haven't tried it. So right now we're gonna try and see if the transmission works, see if we can go forward or reverse. And I'll try the hydraulics. I really don't think I'm going to have hydraulics. Well, it moved. And as you can see, the back hope is pinned up, which is great for being able to get it to move. The front bucket is not. Hence all the struggle I had just to get it to move at this point. So Alright, so I was giving it a shot getting the bucket on the back hoe here jacked up. And I was using the bottle jack and obviously I got the bucket up, but it did not bring the bucket up. It brought the whole machine up, as you can see. The whole front axle is completely off the ground. So I gotta figure out how to release the hydraulics so I can, let's see here, I guess these rams here have to extend out so that 
the whole loader arm can lift up. I had to chain the bucket forward because as I was jacking it up, the bucket wanted to keep tilting down because of the way the mechanism works on, uh, on the bucket. It, it will naturally want to go down at an angle. It's leading edge anyway. But yeah, this old girl's ready to go, just about. Figure out how to get this bucket up, then we'll uh, be loading it up, hauling it out of here. So heck yeah. Oh yeah, check it out. I got a, a new seat for it. Right here. Check that out. It's just sitting in the weeds. I asked if I could have it, and they said sure. So that is gonna be a heck of an upgrade from this. I mean, it does have those beautiful rust holes. Uh, I kind of regret losing those, but that'll be cool. And it has a headrest. <laughs> Digging in style, baby. All right, so on the way out here, Mike was driving the green truck. I was in this truck, and we're here to get the backhoe, the Massey Ferguson over there. And this thing decided to blow a radiator. So, good thing my buddy Josh was also here. He, that trailer was behind this truck. So we put the trailer on his truck. Cause right here, big crack right in there. And coolant was just spraying everywhere. And so, I just kind of was like, all right, let's just load it up onto this. Cause I had all my tools in there all the tools in the bed. I didn't want to unload them and I didn't have time to go get a trailer and didn't want to waste the day. So I'm going to unload this here and then I'm going to go take the Massey and then we're going to bring another trailer to get this because there is one more piece of machinery here that we are uh, going to be getting. Throw a four by four on that middle ramp, or a two by four, a couple of them, or a piece of angle iron, channel iron, anything we can find, or a piece of pipe. Okay. And let the blades hit, get us a little bit more up. Fair enough. You know, but I, mean, geez, I got it up another half. See, there's not a lot of hydraulic fluid in this thing. Like, so, I did repair that hose over there, but and I put a little in it, but obviously because the pump's not connected, I didn't. I didn't uh, want to fill it because I didn't, exactly. you know, I don't want to waste it. I think this will be high enough. Well, let's put a skid underneath it. And put it I in. mean, those wood blocks is all the wood blocks that I have. Well, it's okay. You're, I've already heaned it up a little ways. My thought was we take another one, run it all the way over the top, and hook it to the back. We won't need it if we skid it because it'll back off. It'll come off with the blade. Is it, is it up? Gonna stay right here? Yeah, uh, might. I mean, the first thing I get the angle on back here. Got another angle on try to get a little bit more height. Oh, I see. And then I can get some. Alright. I'm already losing this. Well, what I'll do is I'll get ready to start it. I'll get the batteries and whatnot. Thank you. 
Alright, so for everybody that's going to tell me you need to put the buckets on the deck, I know this, but in this case we're not going to do that because they aren't going back up. So this is going to be a short trip to where it's going to go get fixed, where I'm going to fix it, and then I'll be able to operate the buckets. So in situations like this, you get the machine where you need to get going. I know it's not the right, but it would take hours to get it back up and get it all situated. So. We're going to be as safe as we can, we'll get it chained down, and then we'll get out of here. Alright, I'm going to pull forward.
we got it here. Got it here safely. Now it's ready to get worked on. That square should be bolted to that pulley. And right above my finger, you can see the welding that somebody did trying to weld that block to the pulley. 